Rather than buying a whole new sheet of plywood, I'm making my fence out of scraps of various 12mm ply. I have some red phenolic coated birch ply, the flower ash veneer poplar core ply, and the vanilla Baltic birch ply to play with. I did end up needing more than what's pictured, but this was to show the sort of scraps I used. First up the plywood for the base and bracket cut. The short side bracket was ripped to exact width after mocking everything up. Using the crosscut sled, I trimmed one edge square, then cut everything to exact length. I probably should have cut this to length before any of the ribs. Bracket sides are clamped onto the fence to make a very tight fit. The short bracket side, that is the router table side, has the base piece underneath it to raise it up to the correct height. A bead of glue is laid down on both bracket sides, then the bracket cap is put on top and secured with some brads. The base and back fence both have cuts to elongate the clearance hole for the router bit. Both pieces are then taken to the drill press and using a large forcing bit drilled through. Two short squares are cut out at the crosscut sled, then they're ripped from corner to corner at the bandsaw to form triangular braces. The front fence faces are ripped, then crosscut in half. Both front faces receive a 45 degree bevel on one short edge. Front faces receive two counter bores with a force bit each. Then a pilot through hole is drilled with a small twist bit. Then the faces can be flipped and through hole for the bolt can be drilled. Doing it this way prevents any nasty tear out on the backside which would affect alignment. Four pilot holes are drilled on the back fence, two on either side of the clearance opening. Being very careful, I lower the workpiece onto the router bit, using the pilot holes as guide points. This takes several passes to cut the groove. Alternatively, just using a jigsaw or scroll saw to cut out the channels. They don't have to be perfectly smooth. The back fence gets glued on top of the base, then the brackets are glued and nailed to both. This will hopefully keep the fence square and flat. Then everything can be flipped and the bracket can be glued and nailed to the base. T-track screwed into the back fence provides an easy way to attach stop blocks or feather boards. The fence is quickly and easily attached to the table saw fence and can be secured with a clamp. Alternatively, you could use the magnetic switches such as mag switch, mag jigs to secure it to the table saw fence.
As I said in the previous video on the router table insert wing thing, uh, there is a full set of plans available on my website for uh, the fence. It's not just a 3D model like I've done in the past, but step-by-step -step instructions, um, cut list, that sort of stuff. Uh, I have applied a coat of shellac on this as I do pretty much standard with all my shop projects as it just makes it easier to clean up the dust. Uh, and that's about it really. I will probably at some stage build some little stops for doing stop dados, that sort of stuff, uh, and feather boards, which I'll probably do at the same time when I do the stops for the crosscut sled and all those sort of T-track accessories all in one hit. I do have a new router on the way to put in here, which has a non-broken winder, and I'll do a follow-up for the router table and fence with that actually in operation when that new router arrives. Thanks for watching.